Hello, everybody, and welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart, and in this lesson, we're going over Science Book 3, Lesson 14. And Lesson 14 is talking about how objects move, how their position moves. So, in this lesson, we will discover how to describe, first of all, where things are and how to describe how locations or positions move. Okay, so that's our lesson for today. As always, we begin with the vocabulary. And the first word we have is position. This is a good place to begin, right? Because we talk about where things are. Where are objects or people, right? In this case, we have a boy. So, we can say, where is he, right? What is his position? Where is he located? Position and location mean the same thing. So, position and, or location. The place where something is. The boy is on the hill, for example. Okay, that's his position. That is his location. Okay. Next word, we have backward. Now, if you drive a car, I know you're probably too young to drive a car, but if you're on a bike and you move, you know, your feet to make your bike go behind you, you're making it move backward. Backward uh, is a word that describes the direction in which a person or an object is moving. So, of course, you know, you can move this way. We'll talk about that soon. But if you move this way behind you, you're going to go behind you. You're moving backwards towards the direction that is behind you. Okay. And of course, if you're driving a car, you have to be very careful about going backward. Look, right? Make sure that you can see where you're going. Okay. Backward. And of course, the opposite direction is forward. So, backward, forward. Very easy. Usually, most of the time, we move forward. We walk forward. We ride our bikes forward. Your mom or your dad drives the car. Most of the time, they are going forward. They are going in the direction that is in, in front, sorry, in front of you. So, in front of you, you're going in that direction, you are moving forward. If you are going in the direction that is behind you, you are going backward. Forward, backward. Okay, good. Leap. Can you leap? Of course you can. Leap is like jump. Actually, leap and jump are very similar. And of course, jump is used in the definition. So, jump is right there. I won't bother writing it for you. But leap, leap is to make a large jump. It's not just a small jump. Oh, by the way, uh, it's interesting because jump, there's many kinds of jumps. Okay. Leap is one kind of jump. It means a large jump. But what if you take a short jump? Like a bunny rabbit, right? Then we say that's a hop. Hop, pandiro. It's the opposite of leap. A hop is a short or small jump. A leap is a big jump. You go far on a leap. Or you can jump over. In this case, this woman is jumping over something. So she's going to leap. She's not going to hop. She's not going to make it over. She's going to leap. Over it, but they are both jumps. Okay. So, how high can you jump? Okay. Roll. Roll means to move an object by making it turn over and over, like the up and down, making that rotate so it rolls in a direction. Now, this is a good picture because as you can see, it's a picture of bowling and you have a big heavy ball. We call that a bowling ball and you throw it down towards the pins and as the ball moves down the floor, it is rolling. So, you want to roll the ball. Uh, it will turn, it will turn over and over, right? It will turn over and over as it moves in a certain direction. Okay. Next one is motion. We've talked about several different types of motion already in this vocabulary section. Motion is just 
the process of moving. So forwards, that is forward motion. Backward, that is backward motion. Rolling, you could say it has a rolling motion. A jump, a leap is also a motion. So motion just means the process of moving. And we can say, uh, we usually use motion as a noun, right? Which motion are you using? Or what is the motion of the object? Where is it going? Is it going forward? Is it going backwards? What kind of motion? Is it jumping? Is it rolling? So we use motion as a noun. Okay, those are our words for this lesson. Let's talk about the first main idea. And the first main idea is position words and motion words. If you look at this chart, it's divided into two parts, right? The top part, the part on top, is talking about where things are maybe at the beginning. Or you're just looking at something, you're saying, where is the object? The bottom part of the chart shows motion. So first of all, you have an object. It is in a certain location or position. Maybe it will move, and that is the motion. So first, let's talk about where things are. What kind of words can we use to describe where things are? And then, what kind of words can we use to say how the, how the position or location of those objects can change. Okay, so first, where are things? First, we can use the word on. On means that something, a person or an object, is physically touching and it's on top of another object. Okay, so on, we can say the girl is on the table. It looks like a coffee table. So the girl is on the table. And remember, when you say something is on another thing, it's physically resting, right? It's physically resting on it. It's not above it, right, or over it. It's on it, okay? I'll come back to that in the next picture. So on, the girl is on the coffee table. Now, the girl can also go under the coffee table like this boy. He looks like he's playing a game. Maybe he's hiding from somebody, uh, but he is under the table. So under the table doesn't have to be touching the table in this case, just under the table. The boy is under the table. Ahead. Now this might be a little bit hard to catch right away, but what they're talking about is here we have two people. We have, we have mom and we have her daughter. And her daughter is sitting ahead of the mom. Mom is in the back and the daughter is in front or ahead of her mom. Usually, though, we use a head when we're talking about many things that are in motion. It, for example, cars, or if you're waiting in line. Let's say there's a, a very popular movie and you want to buy a ticket, but there's many people waiting to buy the ticket, so you are in line. You can look at the people ahead of you in the line. And then, there are, of course, people behind you. So a head means in a forward position, uh, closer to an, uh, a destination than another person. That's ahead. And of course, the opposite of that is behind, as I said before. So uh, something can be ahead of another thing, or it can be behind another thing. And that's a good thing to think about. Think of a line. You're waiting in line at a movie theater or a cafeteria to get your lunch or to get on the bus to go to school. You're waiting in line. Who is in front of you, who is ahead of you, and who is behind you. So ahead, we can also use in front of. And of course, behind, you can also say in back of. Especially we use these expressions for lines. Okay, good. Now that those words tell us where something is, but what if those positions change? right? Then we have words that we use to describe motion. So the first word, motion words, of course, are used to tell how something's position changes, as we said before. So forward means forward is the motion. It's the, the motion or the direction in which an object or person moves. So if 
you are moving forward in the line. You know, maybe it takes a while, but you're moving forward. I hope you're not moving backward. <laughs> maybe there's an accident up ahead or something. Okay, so, but you're moving forward. You're going in front of you. And of course, backward, we already talked about these words in the vocabulary. You're moving backward. You're going in the direction that is behind you. Now, two new words, up. If an object is moving up, it is rising, right? It is going up. And if an object is going the other direction, it is going down. So in the, this picture here, the boy and the girl, uh, looks like boyfriend and girlfriend, they are going up the stairs. So they go up the stairs, right? Maybe there's a cafe up there. They have some coffee and then later they come down the stairs. Okay. So up the stairs, down the stairs. You can go up a ladder, down a ladder. An airplane goes up and an airplane comes down, of course, safely, I hope. Okay, so, so the up and down. Okay, so those words describe how objects or people move. Now, we also have another picture that's pretty similar, actually, but we, let's take a look at this and just kind of maybe review some of these words, and we have a couple more words, and, and another distinction I want to talk about, like I mentioned before. This is a picture of a bedroom. And when you describe the position of objects, and this is a good example, maybe in a bedroom, we can use certain words. Now, some words we've already talked about, like on. I've already said on. On the desk. So if you see this little laptop computer, it is on the desk. Don't get that confused with above or over. Here we have above. This picture, it's a strange picture. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird, yeah, because it's the same as the, as the wallpaper. So that's an odd picture. Anyway, it, the picture is not on the bed. It's not touching the bed. It's not resting on the bed. It's on the, it's on the wall because it's touching the wall. Okay. Even though it's not above the wall, it's on the wall. So if you hang a picture on the wall, it's touching the wall. But it's above the bed because it's in a higher position above the bed. Now we can also say over, over the bed. So it's above the bed, or you can say over the bed. Above and over are the same thing, okay? On means it's resting, it's touching, and there's nothing holding it up, right? It's actually resting. Gravity is, it's, it's resting on top of the object. Above means over, not touching. Another example is this pillow. You see this pillow here? This pillow, is it above the bed? No, it is on the bed. That's a good distinction. Moving down, we have here to the left of. That's a, that's a good phrase to remember. Now, of course, you have two hands. Now, I'm looking at you, so my right hand is here and my left hand is here, right? If I turn it around for you guys, right? This is my right hand, this is also your right hand, and this is your left hand. So when we talk about things, it's very common to use right and left. In this case, we can say the bed is to the left of the shelf. This is the shelf. Actually, this is kind of a strange piece of furniture. It's a combination. Uh, these are shelves, shelf, shelf, I can't see it, but shelf, shelf. So the whole thing is, uh, a sh we can say it's shelves. Uh, some people, you could call it a books, a bookshelf, right? Although he's not using it for books, except for maybe here. But anyway, and it's also, on the bottom though, these are not shelves, these are cabinets. They, they have drawers. So it's a combination cabinet shelf. Anyway, the bed is to the left of this piece of furniture. So it's to the left of the shelf. If something is on the opposite side, it is to the right. To the left, to the right. So it's very common for people to say, move to your left, that means you move to your left, or move to your right, move to the right side. Okay, so move to the left, move to the right. If you're driving a bike, right, you want to stay on the right side, of the road uh, in most countries. If you're, uh, and then people coming towards you, they are on your left. Okay, good. Last one, we have next to. Next to, you could also say beside. Next to uh, means that there's not much distance between the two objects. I mean, they could be touching, 
That's possible, but they don't have to be touching. There could be a small gap or some space between them, but they're very close to each other. So in this case, it looks like a backpack, right? I think that's a backpack, and that is next to the closet. We can also say it is to the left of the closet, but it's pretty close, so it's next to the closet. And also, we can say the bed is next to the shelf, but you see this little piece here? It's not really next to. There's something in, in between. I'll teach you something new. In between. In between. There we go. In between. This is actually a nightstand. If you have a little table, sometimes it has a door. It doesn't have to. It could be just a little table. But if you put it next to your bed, you put your cell phone, your alarm clock on it, we call that a nightstand. Night. Stand because you usually use it at night when you go to bed and you put stuff on it. It's one word, nightstand. So the nightstand is in between the bed and the cabinet shelf combination. And the bed is next to the nightstand, or the nightstand is next to the bed. The bed's big, so we would say that the uh, nightstand is next to the bed. Okay, good. So those are some extra words or expressions for describing the positions of things. So now it's time to go over the reading. And as always, I will read the reading out loud. You guys can repeat in your mind, think about the pronunciation, or repeat out loud, practice the pronunciation actively. And of course, let's focus on the vocabulary that we've learned in this lesson. Let's begin. Position is the place where an object is. We can describe an object's position. For example, we can say, the ball is on the table. If the ball's position is changing, then the ball is in motion. The ball is moving. Okay, so in motion, it is moving. Okay, next we have objects can move in different ways. Some objects can move fast and others slow. An object can move in a straight line. A ball can roll in a straight line. A child on a swing moves forward and backward, and also up and down, up and down, and then up, right? So it's fun. Obviously, swings are fun, but you're moving in many different directions. The swing moves in a curved line. Now, we didn't talk about that in the vocabulary, but that's an important thing. Before, we said straight, straight. Straight, right? So things can move in a straight line. This is straight. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not perfect. <laughs> but this is pretty straight. Actually, let's do this. This line here is straight. But a, oh, what did I do? Straight. Okay. <laughs> straight. Okay, next one. Curved. Curved is not a straight line. In a swing, you're going like this. That is a curve, right? So you're going in a curved line, and you're going backwards and forwards, forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. That's a curved line as opposed to a straight line. So the swing moves in a curved line. If you throw a ball to a friend, the ball will follow a curved line. If you leap off a table, Joshua Mayo, be careful. Okay, Joshua Mayo. Okay. If you leap off a table, your motion will be up and away from the table and then down to the ground. When you leap, you follow a curved line. Okay, so very interesting talking about uh, motion. How do things move? And we can see how we move. 
right? We can move in many different ways. Balls move in different ways. When we play different kinds of games, we can roll balls, we can throw balls, and of course ourselves, we can walk, we can run, we can swing, we can jump, we can leap. Lots of different motions. Okay, let's break down the reading passage into the reading skill. And here we have main idea and details. So, kind of what I said just before at the end of the reading, right? We can move in many different ways. And if our position is changing, if an object's position is changing, it is in motion. That's the main idea for the reading passage and really this lesson, right? So, let's take a look at some details or examples that support this sentence or this idea. First, we have a person on a swing moves beep and backward, right? So, we want the opposite of backward. I know there are many different motions, but here we want the opposite of backward because we, we mentioned backward, so we should mention the opposite of backward. And of course, the opposite of backward is forward. So, a person on a swing moves forward, forward, and backward. Forward and backward. Also, up and down, that's true, but they said backward, so we need the opposite. Forward and backward. The swing follows. Now, what kind of line are we talking about when we describe the motion of a swing? It is, is it a straight line? No. It is a curved line. It is a curved line. Curved. Curved. It's a little difficult, right? When you make the V, V, your teeth are on your bottom lip. And the D, curved. When you make the D sound, your tongue goes up to the top, the roof of your mouth. D, just quickly. It touches it and drops. So, curved, curved. Yeah, okay? If you practice these positions, you will pronounce that perfectly. Curved. Okay, good. Curved. So, a curved line. Okay, next one. If you beep over a friend, your motion will be up and forward and then down. Now, it didn't exactly say this in the text. That's okay because we can think about it. They did talk about jumping off a table, right? And what kind of jump? It's a big jump. So, we use not hop. We use leap. And it should be past tense. If you, well, it doesn't have to be. Actually, you can use present tense. If you leap, if you leap over a friend, now don't do this because it's a little dangerous. But if you try to jump over a friend, maybe if your friend kneels down, right, and you're on a table and you jump over your friend, you leap over your friend, don't just try to leap over your friend if they're standing up. That's not a good idea. Okay, so be careful. Okay, but if you leap over a friend, think about it. If you jump over a friend, your motion will be up, right? Because you're jumping up and of course forward, but then you will come down because of gravity and you will come back to earth. Whew, actually, that's good. That's a good thing. Okay, so if you leap over a friend, it's not in the text, but we can imagine that. Now, next, if an object is in motion, it's Beep is changing. Well, what are we talking about, right? Actually, this, this part is almost saying this again. It's, it's basically repeating the idea here and it's just changing the words around, right? So it says if an object's position is changing, it is in motion. So this says if an object is in motion, it's what is changing? Well, it's right there. It's position is changing. Position is changing. So, this is really not, technically, it's not a detail that supports the main idea. It is a restatement of the main idea. And that also is very common in writing. When you're writing, you might start off with a topic sentence or a main idea. Then you have detail, 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 and then you could restate the main idea. But when you restate the main idea, don't just repeat the same way. Uh, it shows your writing skill if you can change it around. And that's exactly what we have here, right? We say, we say the main idea in one way, and then we give detail, 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 and then we restate the main idea 
in a different way. And that's a very common writing technique. Okay. Well, uh, that's our lesson for today. So again, we covered uh, how to talk about or how to describe the position of objects and also how they move. So I hope you learned some interesting ideas, some good vocabulary as well. And thank you for studying with me as always. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.